Awesome. So many people are coming in and so many familiar names. This is so exciting. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse Guy. Thanks so much for joining us for this webinar today. We have had over 200 people register for this webinar. So thank you so much for uh, joining us to learn about the most recent trip that um, our good friend Simon just went on uh, to Kenya. Um, so thank you for your interest in the updated uh, protocols and travel information um, getting to Kenya. Um, I want to start out with a few um, housekeeping notes. Simon, if you put my uh, information up, I'll just give you a little bit more information about myself. That's me. Hey everyone, uh, again, my name is Jesse Bly. I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. Uh, take a second to jot down my information. If you have any questions um, after the webinar, I'm happy to help and get Simon to help us as well. Um, but it's just jesse at emergingdestinations.com. Again, over 200 people registered for this webinar. I can't wait to hand everything off to um, Simon in a moment. Uh, but I want to start off with some good news. Um, hopefully you've heard that the uh, JFK to Nairobi direct flight with Kenya Airways will be um, starting up again at the end of the month. Uh, really, really great news. So I wanted to start off with that. Um, also, this will be a pretty uh, brief and very, very straightforward webinar, but I um, have left quite a bit of time at the end of the webinar for questions. Um, so please type those through the GoToWebinar control panel. It's just on that side panel that you see there. Just click on questions, type those through. I've asked Simon to grab a glass of wine um, and stick around for um, some questions at the end. So please type those through. Um, also, this webinar will be recorded. Um, so if you have to step out for a call or um, something urgent, uh, no worries. I will be sending the recording to you um, by the end of the week. Um, so Simon, uh, I'm going to let you take it away. I'm so excited for this. I think there's going to be a lot of questions. I'm traveling to Kenya next month on my honeymoon, um, so I'm here to take some notes as well. Um, but again, everyone, please type through those questions. Uh, we'll have Simon get to those. Um, and uh, over to Simon, our Kelly and Peacock rep in the UK. Thank you very much, Jesse. And hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to quickly talk you through um, Easy Kenya Protocol. I've just come back from the most incredible trip. Um, and the purpose of this is literally a quick 10, 15 minute talk through Easy Protocol, answer your questions and really explain how easy and how straightforward it is traveling to Kenya now. And it seems quite strange that we're all working travel and yet we're talking about how do we travel now, the, the new normal, which we keep hearing this word, but um, everything's very straightforward. Kenya's got a great policy. And I'm going to talk you through quickly how everything's working in Kenya now. Um, very quickly, um, I've been traveling to Kenya for over 20 years now. Um, Kenya is very much in my heart. Um, I love this country. I love its people. I love its diversity. I love its culture. And people don't go once to Kenya. They keep on going as repeat times. Um, I'm very proud to represent these five experiences um, and obviously work closely with Jane and Jesse um, re representing um, Kenny and Peacock here in the UK. So I'm based just outside London. Um, so um, it's cold and dark here. Um, and I'm going to talk you through nice, warm Kenya. Um, to, to set the scene, um, what's really important is to explain Kenya's protocol um, because they've been really pioneering to lock down the country, how they've managed the situation, and it's really important to explain this quickly because this sets the scene for why Kenya is so safe to travel to. So a little quick recap of the last six months is that on the 13th of March, they had their first um, COVID case. Two days later, the whole country closed down as closest borders. Um, the schools closed down, everybody was asked to work from home, and it was the first African country to lock down. So within two days, they reacted very, very quickly to the situation. Um, for six months now, they've had um, a curfew in place, So and they've had a very tough lockdown, and they, they've locked it down very hard to control the movement. So basically what they did in the big cities, most really focused on Nairobi and Mombasa is that nobody was allowed to leave Nairobi and Mombasa, Khalifa and Kwale. So basically that was really clever because it stopped the movement getting out to the rural communities. So a very clever move um, very early on in the situation. Um, as things uh, improved um, and didn't, nothing really escalated in Kenya and the, um, the, the um, curfew changed and softened a little bit. Um, and then really after a couple of months of the main cities being locked down, 
they then allowed inter-regional travel. So on the 7th of July, really all of the internal airlines opened, um, all generally lots of the properties all opened. And lots of people, there's a lot of expats living in particularly Nairobi, they'd been desperate to get out to wild open spaces and down to the coast. So lots of people started traveling very, very quickly. And um, they had very good protocol in place with all the lodges reopening, that I'll explain a little later on. Um, and then they would continue to work on their international policy. So they could have opened up sooner, um, but I think they really wanted to make sure that all the protocols were in place that I'll explain a bit in a bit more detail in a minute. But on the 1st of August, 1st of August Kenya opened internationally. And the best place to look um, for a list of countries that are, are exempt from quarantine, which is about 150 countries, is this website here, so KCAA. Um, it, obviously, this um, list is changing um, daily, um, but um, it's the easiest way to find out what the status is. Those of you that are ATA members as well, there's ATA have got a list of country updates that's changing regularly as well. So at the end of September, um, and the curfew was slightly softened um, and the, the restaurants and bars across the country could start selling alcohol again. Um, so they had a very tight lockdown. And sadly, obviously with this, with this pandemic, there have been deaths, but very small numbers compared to other countries. So there've been under 700 recorded deaths in Kenya. So they've managed the situation very, very well. And they've managed themselves very successfully to move out of COVID and to move forward out of it. Um, my Swahili is not very good, um, but Hakuna Matata, which basically means no worries. Um, there are two very important protocols that Kenya has put in place before they opened. Um, one was with the WTTC, with, which is the safe travel stamp. Um, so they've been certified very quickly for that. And then at the end of August, they were the first country globally to have the safe of um, safer tourism seal by responsible tourism. So Minister Bilalo in the picture here has been really pioneering working with the private sector and really making sure that they showcase themselves with all the best international protocol to open up success. So Kenya has been a phenomenal example um, to manage the situation successfully going forward. And in terms of traveling now, it's really straightforward and really easy. And really, bottom line is the only thing that, that is different is that you need to travel with two new forms of paperwork. So Kenya's policy is really, really clever. And um, basically, everybody has to travel to Kenya or entering Kenya has to travel with a negative COVID certificate that's less than 96 hours old. So you can't enter Kenya without this. And personally, I wish every country did this because it puts your mind at rest. It means that Everybody on the plane is traveling with a negative COVID test, so it takes all of the fear out of flying. Um, and importantly, the problem is uh, uh, not in Africa, so actually they don't want it being brought into Africa, so they're protecting their residents and, and their communities. So a really clever policy. Um, the, the process to get the, um, the COVID test is quite straightforward. Um, mostly you have to go to a private clinic, which I'm sure is the same, with most, mostly in the States, but in the UK where I'm based, it's between sort of 150 and 350 pounds, depending on where you go. Um, what is quite good now is that lots of surgeries are open seven days a week. So when you know that you need, when you know, you know, you know your travel dates, so you just book in your test within your 96 hours of entering the country. So it's really straightforward. Um, the test takes two minutes. Lots of us have obviously had the test now. Um, and then you get email, I've got my emails, my results the next day. So it's really straightforward. The other form that you need to take in is a Ministry of Health form. Um, this is basically a series of questions and it's asking you generally, do you have any symptoms? Um, and just, just health forms, health questions, basically. It takes you two minutes. It gives you a QR code. Um, so my advice is with technology often, having issues is print both of these out um, and then you've got paper documents to travel on your arrival but it's important to stress that the a COVID test that you need is the PCR one which is called a fit to fly one I know that there are various different COVID tests on the market now the airline process is so straightforward and, and for those of you well obviously lots of us we're all working in travel but lots of us haven't flo flown strangely and it's been a very strange year so um my last flight prior to this was in march and i was desperate to get on a plane and desperate to get back to the wild open spaces of kenya so um my flight was obviously london to nairobi 
obviously the difference now of flights is that everybody's masked um social distancing every um, in, information generally obviously everywhere in the airports and most of the shops doing one-way entry which is quite straightforward um i noticed the lounges in the airport aren't doing buffet food now so it's actually quite straightforward you just these order from an app and you get table service which is great so the the process is really straightforward with flying and it really feels very normal apart from wearing a mask and i think we're all quite used to wearing a mask now to obviously protect ourselves and protect other people in public places so obviously when you when you're eating you obviously remove your mask and um, i would say keep the wine coming and then you can keep the mask off and um, what i would say is you get limited food um but i think you often do on planes anyway but um it's very much box now um, and and everything's just more wrapped and clean probably and um, so there's obviously lots going on in the background process but i think what most impresses you about the traveling process is when you arrive into kenya uh, and, and arriving at Jomo Kenyatta, which is the international airport, is you're just you're entering really proper protocol. So you arrive, you present your COVID certificate, um, which is really, which is um, obviously quite straightforward and quick. You show your QR code. They've got thermal scanning machines, um, that which you just walked past and have a temperature check. And obviously, the sanitizer stations everywhere and social distancing. So it's so much more comprehensive than the UK. And from lots of American travelers I've heard from, much more comprehensive than um, traveling through the States. So as long as your uh, temperature is not above 37 and a half degrees, as long as you don't have a cough um, and you don't have any flu-like symptoms, You've got no quarantine for over that 150 countries, which includes all of the states. So the visa process is still very straightforward and really easy. Um, I always do mine um, on. I always do mine um, on arrival. Um, very quick, very easy, as, as it always has been. And then your bags are sanitised and off you go. So really straightforward, really easy. That protocol is very much followed through with the internal circuits of flights. So um, Wilson Airport, for those of you. Um, that haven't been to Kenya yet is the dom local domestic airport where all the flights go from and it's a really good example of how they can successfully operate during COVID so again there's thermal scanning you see pictures of the machine here they do temperature checks and they've got all the necessary precautions because of course we have to live with this um for, for the time being so kenya is really prepared even in the in out in the bush as explained these very wild and remote areas so the only difference that you really have when you fly internally is that you have to wear a blue medical mask and um, if you don't have ones the airlines give it to you that's fine and um, the internal flights in kenya are generally very short so you're probably doing a maximum of an hour on each flight anyway so again you're not wearing your mask for long and then as soon as you're out of your car sorry out of the plane into your open car you take your mask off and then you're out into the wild so and um, safari link and air kenya protocol is really impressive and um, one point I want to stress is that all of this protocol was already happening before COVID um, and it's, it was obviously behind the scenes and it's now, they're now just doing more vigorous cleaning um, and their protocol is, is, is more strict. But lots of this was going on before, but flying circuit is as easy as it always has been and even going to really wild and remote airstrips in the middle of nowhere. Um, you've got sanitizers and stuff so it's really quite incredible and um, Kenya has really got this in control and it's really on top of everything. Lots of people have been asking me um, obviously how is the lodge experience when you get out into the bush um, and this is a really important bit that I want to talk through because really there's 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 so much good news here to share so what's very clever with Kenya's opening policy when all of the lodges opened in early July Lie, they all had to get an opening certificate which is really clever so basically they had to adhere to lots of new measures again lots of them were doing all of this before but this protocol um, and then they could only open when they've passed all when they've come been inspected and they get the opening certificate so basically as a guest you arrive at any of your lodges and you get temperature check on arrival sometimes daily there's sanitizer stations um sort of discreetly put around the property um, but there's loads being done in the background that is really there to make guests safe. So what lots of the properties are doing are doing things like um, putting staff on rotors, on six week rotors. So all of their staff will have will be tested um, and daily temperature checked. Um, and they're doing very rigorous um, additional cleaning as well. So um, the properties are having to do a lot more to um, make everything as, as easy as, as, as possible to travel through. 
Um, lots of people have asked me, how do they feel these lovely properties? And really, does it look like normal? Absolutely. And actually, I, I'd say it feels better as normal, as I'll explain sort of later on in the presentation. But all of this open space and out into the wilds, I've just had the most phenomenal two week trip and I feel on cloud nine again, I feel completely recharged and I've forgotten the bad bits of 2020 and I'm focused just on my lovely little Kenya bubble of how fantastic everything is. Um, getting away from all the gloom and doom and gloom of all the media. And um, in terms of protocol in the properties and um, all of the staff are wearing masks. You as a guest don't wear a mask unless you're um, unless you want to and unless you're in close proximity to other people in communal areas but in, it's very easy to social distance so basically really you don't wear a mask apart from the internal flight so some of the properties are doing little welcome packs with hand sanitizer and a mask if you want want to want to wear it but really every, everything really does feel completely normal the only things that are really different is that with the new kenya certificate and um, People or properties can't offer communal dining at the moment, um, and there's no self-serving buffets. So lots of properties across Kenya didn't do this anyway, and the fact that they do this now means actually it's a bonus because you've got a more private safari just eating with the people that you're travelling with, um, which is really nice. And then the other thing that's good is that the cars have to um, have less people in the cars. So um, again, lots of the properties are now offering private cars. So you're in many instances getting a private car free of charge and enjoying your private meals, your private drives. You have, you're getting the most private safari everywhere. Um, and of course, it's much quieter than it normally is with what's going on at the moment. So you've got the most exclusive private experience at phenomenal prices. Um, I think an por important point to stress here is that the safari industry has very much been doing all of these protocols for years. Um, and the whole nature of um, the safari industry is space and privacy. So the travel ex traveling experience really doesn't feel any different. Leaving Kenya, really straightforward. You go through and have a temperature check. Um, and then I was flying British Airways. So British Airways were very insistent. That I must fill out a form, otherwise I can't get into the UK. And I completed my form and they didn't ask for it when I got to London and I had no temperature checks. All of this just reinforces how good Kenya's protocol is. I've heard lots of people saying exactly the same um, coming back to the States now that actually the same process, similar procedures are going on. So actually it really just demonstrates how good Kenya is in terms of managing the situation. Um, this is my favourite slide and, and I could talk about this at length, but why travels Kenya now? Um, this, um, God, well, I, I, could, I could talk at length there. I think that we've all felt like caged animals throughout this process. What a strange year. And um, I think after six months to get on a plane and get on a plane was so exciting, but um, to actually go to wild and remote places and breathe all of that fresh air was so, so special. And Kenya is so well set up for very private properties and very good exclusive use properties. So there's such a high level of exclusivity and privacy. And with what's happened over the last six months, there are really great rates on the table, the offers are phenomenal, and every property is really sort of reviewed and put on the table going forward, really flexible booking conditions to really ensure that people don't lose deposits when they are booking and to make it as, as attractive and, and as easy as possible. Importantly, there's no government support um, for Kenya tourism. Um, so the guests, or the lodges rather, really need everybody's business. And there will be some that won't make this, won't make this experience, which will be a really sad journey. Most operators tell me that um, about 95% of their Kenya business from 2020 has moved into 2021, which is brilliant. But what we really need now is 2020 business and everything's set up for it now. Um, an important reason to, of course, visit Kenya, as always, is that the conservation is widely funded through tourism. So the national parks and the conservancies really need the park fees to maintain the anti-poaching and to protect the wildlife. So we really need the tourists to come in. So I had the most private safari I've ever experienced. Um, I was down at one of the properties I was at was at Angama Mara, which is absolutely phenomenal. I'd never seen the migration before. I saw three of the biggest crossings. It was like a BBC film. It was absolutely phenomenal. There were less than 10 cars at the crossing sites. Um, the guides were telling me normally it's over 100 cars. And um, so this is the most a special, special time. And I will never, ever forget the amazing experiences I've just had and the, and the privacy of the whole experience. 
I'd also say one point to stress is that doing multi countries now in Africa is a bit more complicated than it used to be. So um, I want to stress that the safari and beach circuit is really easy in um, in Kenya. Obviously, you've got great beaches on your doorstep, but you do need a little bit of R and R after your trip. You can fly straight from the Mara straight down to places like Diani. It's really straightforward. It's really easy and you, everything's all in the same country so there's no new protocol to go through so my my trip was phenomenal it's more than recharged me i for hands down say it's been my best trip so carpe day and seize the day and um, please tell your clients that traveling to kenya now could not be safer um, and hopefully they listen to you um jesse i know we've got lots of questions that was my quick um whistle stop tour through um, my trip um, and um the protocols but um Jesse, over to you for questions. I know we've got quite a few questions beforehand. Yeah, um, I uh, have a lot of questions for you and everyone, please type those through. I, like I said, I've asked Simon to pour a glass of wine and stick around um, and get us some accurate information. But Simon, I am so excited to go on my honeymoon. I like your reference of caged animals. Um, I, haven't heard that one yet. Feel like, yeah. I truly feel like it's a... Uh, <laughs> been a year so I cannot I cannot wait to go so thank you so much for all of that and again with the um, direct flight JFK to Nairobi opening up at the end of the month um, that's just absolutely excellent news um, so I've written down a few questions everyone type them through um, again this is being recorded so if you have to step out uh, no worries but um, um, Simon this was pretty close to the beginning of the webinar um, so I think we'll just uh, mention it again can you um, talk about the entry protocol for U.S. citizens. I believe it's for um, any citizen, but just touch on that again. <laughs> yeah, so basically, basically to explain the process, it's not not it's not country specific it's it's just um it's just the procedure basically it's procedure specific so basically anybody wherever you're from entering kenya needs to travel in with your negative um covid test with that is basically under 96 hours old and then you also need to fill out your ministry of health form which gives you a qr code so it's the piece it's the covid test and the pcr code they're the only two bits of paperwork that everybody needs to get into kenya perfect um, and that 96 hour cutoff, can you elaborate on that? I think that that's a little bit of a gray area. So um, you have to have a negative COVID test 96 hours prior to your arrival into Kenya. Your arrival into Kenya. Yeah, so, and but what's very good is that when you book your test, um, they, you can book your test in advance. So basically you just book it on dates that work within these time scales. Um, and um, I got my test back the next day. So when you book when you book your test, they will guarantee that you either get it back the next day or with definitely within the time scales that you need them by. So it's quite straightforward. So actually you know that you're going to get your results, which is your certificate to print and take and travel with. It's really easy. Wonderful. Um, I've discovered something um, here in the U.S. called um, COVID consultants, which I think a lot of people have had some success with. So um, just for your information out there, um, a COVID consultant seems to be a, a great way to um, get that correct test. Um, and Simon, it is a PCR test, not a rapid test. That's a very important piece of information. Yeah, really important. So basically what we have in the UK, which I think might be similar to the US, is that you can just go and get a general test to think if you've got it now and I, I can be negative or positive. Um, but actually that's not a fit to fly. So actually the PCR test is basically a bit more of an advanced test um, and um, that's what you need to fly with. So basically when you're booking your test, when you're telling your clients it is the PCR fit to fly um, test that you need. And I think it's, it's, I think it's the same. I think it's the same procedure. Got it. Um, so I think this is a, a really great question as well. Um, you know, when people are flying to East Africa, they're normally combining Kenya with Tanzania. Um, any updated information you can get us on uh, cross-border uh, travel between the two countries? Yeah. So um, yeah. So ba basically, doing doing multi-center itineraries at the moment is 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 more complicated. Um, so specifically to Tanzania, is that when you do Kenya Tanzania, and um, if you were going from the Mara to the Serengeti, you would um, before COVID been going via Magori, and um, Magori is now closed till December next year. So basically, the scheduled flights mean that you have to go from the Mara back to Wilson. Wil Wilson to Kilimanjaro and Kilimanjaro to the Serengeti. So basically that takes pretty much all day. So it's a long way to do it. 
you can charter and um, the charter is going via slightly different routes to what it used to do before but obviously that's quite an expensive um price point to do that the idea of what the airlines are uh, internal airlines are trying to do is to try and get the same routing done for the scheduled flights further down the line if you're going to the coast and if you were going to um zanzibar there's now no flights from um wilson over to zanzibar because um, and the only way that you would get there is having to go back to the international airport at JKIA and you take the Kenya Airways um, co-share with Precision Air from Nairobi to um, Zanzibar. So yeah, it's not as straightforward, but everything's moved forward quite a lot over the last month or so. Prior to that, there was there was no flights between Kenya and Tanzania. Yeah, it's quite the it's like putting a puzzle together now, combining the two. It's uh, much easier to get um, from Kenya into Tanzania, not so much vice versa. So, but we're we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought this was a great question. Um, the small planes, so the puddle jumpers, Safari Link, uh, when you're flying domestic, can you touch on those protocols? I know you mentioned the blue masks and stuff, but uh, are they making you get off the plane and cleaning? How's that working? Um, I mean, basically, most of those flights are sort of like 12 seater flights that we'll be dropping off. If you were going from um, Nairobi to the Mara, you're going to drop off at three or four points in the Mara. So basically, everybody stays on the plane. Basically, you've got your um, blue mask that you're wearing. And basically, you can't throw everybody off the plane to clean it between because no one else is getting on and off it. It's just it's just it's just people leaving to go to lodge to lodge. So um, at the end of that flight, um, it then gets deep cleaned before it picks up new people. So the same people are in that flight from start to finish and then they're just dropped off. Perfect. Um, this mean, is a great as question. I mentioned, I mean, they've been doing all of this protocol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. No, good, good. Um, this is a really good question, and I'm curious as well. On your recent trip in September, who did you see? Who's traveling? Who would you stumble upon? Um, good question. And um, quite a few Americans, I'm pleased to say. Um, right. And um, I, I would say most mostly couples. Interestingly, quite a lot of them were couples that had left the children at home that had enough had enough of homeschooling um, and wanted to go on holiday and leave the children behind. Um, quite a few couples obviously with delayed honeymoons. Um, interestingly, I saw quite a few operators that, like myself, wanted to do the traveling circuit and find out how it worked so they could reinforce how straightforward it was. Um, so um, a mix of people and quite a, quite a, I mean, I did see some Brits and some Europeans and it was just, I think that the lodges are so pleased to be seeing international guests again. They've been seeing residents since July and the resident market for all properties has been pretty strong because there's a lot of expats, particularly in Nairobi. So they haven't really been doing their annual holidays wherever it might be outside Kenya. And they've been enjoying sort of their high season, which they could, um, which normally is a full, of course, and normally at a, at a premium rate. They're now getting reduced rates and traveling last minute. So there's quite a lot of residents as well. Yeah, which is great. Um, here's a question. Um, I'm not sure if you are um, knowledgeable on it, Simon. Um, there's been a, lot, a few questions typed through about village visits right now. Do you know, um, to my knowledge, I think a lot of the village visits have put, been put on uh, on hold, but do you, can you touch on that? Yeah, they have. They have been, and um, because really, we're we're the ones with the problem, um, yeah. and um, they're fearful of us bringing it into um, into into East Africa. So yes, the um, village visits and the community visits aren't aren't happening at the moment, um, and um, yeah, that that's that that's the, those sort of experiences have just been put on hold temporarily. With what's going on? Yeah. Um, a question came through about uh, visas, uh, and I'm just going to answer that from a U.S. perspective. Yes, um, you do require a visa um, entering uh, Kenya from the U.S., and you can do that online prior to arrival, or like Simon said, it's quite simple, actually, um, to get on arrival as well. So whatever floats your boat, um, you are welcome to do that. Um, Here's a good question, um, and maybe uh, hopefully you can touch on it. Are all properties, including Nairobi, required to get the inspection in order to open? I know Balala is doing some sort of, uh, you know, making sure yeah. that everyone has the speed. Can you uh, elaborate on that? Yeah. So, yeah. So basically, every single property in Kenya 
has had to be government inspected. Um, so, um, and this is this is the government taking a really the, the government have put these rules in place in terms of um, protocol and criteria, and it means that. Um, it's being followed at a national standard. So unless properties um, get the certificate, they're not allowed to open. So I think really good process to actually just ensure that all the correct procedures are being done, everything's need is happening how it should be happening. And it's, it's a really good policy. And I think it just demonstrates how, how seriously Kenya is managing the situation and how effectively it's managing it as well. Yeah, excellent. Um, Simon, I think this might be a personal question um, and then helpful to some agents that maybe not might not be as familiar with Kenya in particular. Uh, what beaches do you recommend after a visit from Kenya? I personally am going to Diani, like you said. Do you have any others up your sleeve? Um, Diani, Diani, Diani. And um, Diani is the best, it's the best beach in Kenya. It's 15 mile long stretch of white sand beach. It's absolutely incredible. And it's really, it's not commercial. It's quite sleepy. It's got lovely little beach bars and stuff. It's it's white beach and it's it's not busy. It's not commercial. The other part of the coast is quite interesting to see, which is much more about the culture. Is going up to northern Kenya and going to Lamu um, and um, sort of seeing what they offer up there, which is much more sort of like cultural cultural sort of like um, experiences. But and that's quite a different experience. You're not getting the white white beaches that you're getting down in Diani. But um, yeah, I think Diani is hands down the best beach experience on the Kenya coast. I have never been, and I'm very much looking forward to parking it in the sand and hopefully um, keep the drinks flowing. Um, in the for a treat. <laughs> this is interesting, and it's actually a good question. And I'm not sure if we will be able to um, answer that. Um, if you happen to have symptoms halfway through your safari, do you know what the policy is? Are you required to take a COVID test right then and there at the property? Are you quarantined? It's kind of a, a broad question, but was that discussed when you were there? Sorry, if you, sorry, if, if, you, if you thought you had it. So like in the middle of your, your seven days in and you start sneezing or sniffling, you obviously came with a negative COVID test. Um, that's probably by a camp by camp basis on what they want to do with you. Obviously you're getting temperature checks done, but um, that's, that's a difficult question. I know it's a good question and basically what happens in the in the in the new policy is that basically um they all have to keep a room available for for somebody any guest that potentially might have covid so you would be tested a number of times within i think it's a 24 hour or a 36 hour period if your symptoms continued and your temperature continued to get higher then you're passed over to the authorities to manage and then you'd probably go back to a nairobi hospital the, the medical care in nairobi is world class and it's absolutely phenomenal and and you'd get a really good level of med medical care if you did have it um whilst you whilst you're in kenya yeah my goodness fingers crossed that uh, none of no one experiences that what a what a speed bump in the middle of your um uh safari so i've got or one you, more question will you quarantine in luxury lodge for two an extra two weeks it's quite nice <laughs> that's true that's true that you know you can't complain um i've got one more question and uh no one else has typed anything through so um let's let's ask this one and see if anything else comes through simon um okay. you know no one, no one has a crystal ball but was there any talk of any village visits uh, reopening while you were there i know that's a really big uh, bucket list item for some people to interact with the tribes and just kind of um see a different world but any talk i think you i think you can still get your cultural experience through all the staff in the properties so right. lots of staff in the properties they're all wearing their local dress and um, lots of them where i stayed was still doing um things like a uh, um, the sort of welcome dance and stuff around sundowner type experience so you would still get that really special cultural experience they're not now pulling guests into the dancing as they would have done before covid and um, so now instead of when they come dancing around you don't have to worry that they're going to grab you so it's actually more, <laughs> a bit more relaxing and um, so and um, you're you are still getting the cultural experience and actually it's probably coming more into the properties um, than possibly it was before because you can't go out to see those those sort of cultural experiences so you're, you're still getting it basically yeah and the people that they have in these lodges i mean honestly like you said i 
You're definitely 100% getting uh, the cultural experience there for sure. Um, I love this question. I'll wrap it up with this one, everyone. I know we're just at a 35 minute mark, but um, if we didn't get to your question, I, I know that no worries, but um, Simon, are the animals behaving any differently since uh, the decrease in visitors? I'm sure it's a open playground for them. <laughs> They're like, where are all these people? This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, so I mean, obviously, obviously the, um, I mean, uh, what's one point to mention, what's been interesting is that this year it's been the biggest ever migration, um, yeah. so, um, which is beyond phenomenal. Um, so, and obviously, um, people have seen it with the fewest tourists possible. So, obviously, everything, all of the good conservation efforts have continued. Um, it's really funded by all of the properties rather than the government and um, which is which is which has been a challenge but they've all had to um they've all had to continue to support their conservation efforts so you know that the, the anti-poaching has continued the wildlife um habits have continued as normal and it's i mean the wildlife would it's business as normal and um, so we're, they're probably just enjoying less less cars in places like the mara which would normally be very busy for the migration three four months yeah i always love telling guests you know, the the animals don't know your budget range. They don't know whether you're sleeping in a five star uh, accommodation or a four star or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so I, I lied, Simon. This is a this is a great exit question because we have a question about getting your negative COVID test uh, leaving Nairobi. So a lot of the airlines are requiring you to show a negative COVID test when you get on to your departing flight. I know that Kelly and Peacock will arrange this for you, but um, can you? touch on that at all and we'll wrap it up with the exit question yeah i mean quite quite a lot of airlines aren't i think the only one that is is um emirates are asking for um negative covid tests i think that's the only one so i'd say check with your airlines yeah kelly and peacock are have got good relationships with all the medical teams so actually if you did need to you were going on to another country that needs a negative covid test the, the test would be the person would come to your hotel you'd be it would be done in your hotel and then you get your results generally within 24 hours so um it's it's very easily um done in in country and um, with the right and relevant medical experts yeah super easy and um i highly recommend all the u.s um people that are joining us today um quarantine when you get back into the states uh varies from state to state so i recommend um Good old Google, uh, Google search um, for your quarantine uh, protocols getting back into the U.S. Um, a couple of we've got a couple of people uh, joining us from Canada. Um, so you Canadians uh, must quarantine no matter what country uh, you come come from. So coming from Kenya, you you must quarantine for 14 days getting back into Canada. Um, for everyone else on the webinar, I'm sorry, I don't know. It varies from country to country, state to state, but. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for joining us. Over 200 registrants. I was shocked. So um, we are so happy to um, give you some updated information as, as things are opening up. I think a lot of people are, hopefully you can see the light um, at the end of the tunnel. This has been the craziest time in my life. I uh, And I know that we've got a lot of veterans on the, on the webinar here, but um, Things are opening back up. I'm so inspired, Simon, by you. Your soul's recharged. I absolutely cannot wait. Um, maybe I'll do one of these when I get back to and just talk about my trip because uh, I'll be on cloud nine. I just know it. But Simon, um, I believe it's your um, well, it's past your happy hour. So I really thank you for joining us. Um, really, really helpful information. Yeah, thank you all for your time. And yeah, hopefully I've showed you that Kenya is more than safe and hopefully your clients will listen to that advice and, and move forward and book with confidence because everything's there, everything's everything's ready and everything's waiting. We can't wait. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.